If you like Star Wars, make sure you check out my Star Wars channel, Star Rar, link in the comment section down below and also in the video description down below. Oh my God, we are finally here, the final season of Game of Thrones. So let's break down the first episode and all the crazy things that happened in it. First, let's talk about that intro. That intro for sure is hinting at things we should pay attention for in the final season. Besides them animating the wall coming down, we got an intense animation of the crypts of Winterfell. This isn't just John finds out his parentage in the crypts. No, there's more to them animating it. I'm still betting those that hide in the crypts are surprised with the undead res during the battle. Like, Rickon. I'm gonna bury my brother in the crypt next to my father. Then we saw King's Landing and the anti-dragon weapon, hinting that we're going to see even better anti-dragon weapons this season. No way does Cersei, that paranoid fuck, not have better anti-dragon weapons waiting. Kyburn, that mad scientist, who I absolutely love, by the way, has been concocting some really good stuff. Interestingly, as leaked months and months ago, Wintertown was in fact the first scene of the season. Adorably, Arya moves so a little boy can see the procession, much like others did for her when she was little and excited to see someone important coming. Also notice the music they played with the procession of Jon and Danny coming to Winterfell was the same as Robert and his entourage coming, so that was a nice little callback. Except Robert got a much warmer welcome than, uh... Danny did. Also, I find it so adorable that Arya, like Sansa said, was out lurking and watching. Her expressions just made this scene. How she smiled at Jon, looked concerned about the Hound, and then smiled at Gendry was just life. Now here's what made me super uncomfortable. So notice how Danny felt unsure and upset that the Northerners were giving her a look of not exactly liking her, and Jon reminded her, hey, I warned you, Northerners don't like people from the south. But then when her dragons flew overhead, she looked smug as hell when people were all freaked out by them. Danny is very much so, if you don't respect and love me, I'll make you obey me through fear, and that really concerns me. And I really feel like we're building towards that, but I'll talk more on that later. Still in the opening scene, I really hate the Tyrion genital jokes at this point. Tyrion is so much more clever than this, and they just keep neutering him. It's like they don't know what else to do with Tyrion, so they think, oh, okay, we'll, we'll make ball and, and dick jokes. That, that's clever. No, Tyrion's better than that. So I was thinking maybe we would see progress for Tyrion, but with that opening scene, I... am really starting to doubt that. I think they're trying to make him out to be not as smart as what he was portrayed as in the initial seasons. So, okay. D&D, wherever you want to go with that. I love, love, love how John hurried his horse forward when he saw Bran and embraced and kissed him. All these reunions are so amazing this season. Of course, then there was that creepy moment of John saying, you're a man now, and Bran responding, almost, with that really weird far off look. Poor John was so weirded out, he just doesn't know what to make of it. And of course, Sansa was on the sidelines giving a smug look. Well, if you were here, you would know exactly what was going on with Bran. Danny, of course, tries to be super polite with Sansa and compliment her, and Sansa is so, so cold. I know we're all looking to talk shit on Sansa, and I agree there are some ridiculous things they did with her character, but this was actually legit. Sansa's polite coldness is perfectly her and perfectly understandable. You bent the knee after we just got the North back to the family that killed our uncle and grandfather and tried to end our father? Seriously, John? Come on. John is definitely in the wrong here. Danny agreed to help John defeat the Night King before he bent the knee. He didn't need to give up his crown. I'm really glad Lyanna talked some mad shit to him. I thought it'd get annoying, but she spoke the truth. What even are you now? We decided you were king in the north, and you just threw that away, dude. And yeah, I understand that John is right that it doesn't matter who rules with the coming of the undead, they all need to work together. But it does, and I wish he was more politically aware. I mean, it does make sense that Sansa is politically aware, as she's the daughter of Catelyn, and Catelyn was very good at politics, but still, I feel like John should understand how to unite people. Of course, I guess if he was really good at uniting people, he wouldn't have gotten stabbed to death, would he have? Oops. Okay, and now did you not love the glares between Danny and Sansa? Those two do not like each other. Sansa gives her the cold shoulder and it was intense. 
And then Danny's responding to Sansa asking, what do dragons even eat? And Danny's smug response, whatever they want. That was definitely a threat. Maybe some other people don't speak a uh, cat language. That's a threat. Keep glaring at me, bitch. Dragons take whatever they want. I will get what I want. So do you want me to destroy you, to eat you in the process? How about you decide and let me know? Hell, jumping ahead real quick, think of Danny's convo to John. I'm Sansa's queen. If she doesn't respect me, and then her voice trails off and she gives John a look. Danny is saying, either your sister will respect me and you need to help her do that if she can't do it on her own, or she will fear me. How about you take your pick, John? Keep her in line or I will. Danny is getting a little intense this season and I think D&D are doing it on purpose to prepare us for Danny going ape shit. Back to the Northern meeting though, why would Tyrion bring up the Lannister army coming up north when there was already a bunch of discontent at the meeting? Seriously, dude, learn to read the room. There is a time and place for everything. I'm glad that Sansa called his shit out. Speaking of Sansa, that conversation between her and Tyrion was interesting, I guess is the best word. Sansa just kept trying to shut the conversation down, but I think that's mostly her trying to protect herself. She doesn't want to open herself up to anyone or risk showing any weakness. However, I find it quite shocking when Sansa said what I've been thinking. Tyrion is no longer the clever one. Since Tyrion arrived in Essos, it seems like misstep after misstep and they just dumbed down his character. And then he got to Westeros again, and he just kept making mistake after mistake, which seemed really out of character. Even Sansa saying, I used to think you were the most clever man in the Seven Kingdoms, says so much. Tyrion royally fucked up Danny's war, and then he's being suckered by Cersei. Is his character gonna get any growth? No? Okay. And then it was really weird when Tyrion said, many men underestimated you, and many of them are dead. I, I get what he's trying to say, but... A lot of them are dead not because of Sansa. So, I don't know, are you flirting with her? Or are you trying to butter her up? I, what are you doing, Tyrion? The people that generally underestimated her died for reasons that did not involve her. So, are we just are we just talking of Sansa this season? So, everybody looks up to her and she's super awesome. I like Sansa. She's fine, but I really feel like we're shitting on other characters to prop her up and that's not cool. John and Arya reuniting was adorable. I did tear up because I'm a total nerd. I love John asking her if she's ever used needle and her replying, once or twice. John has no idea the shit she has done and been through since they've separated. And I'm sure that's going to be an off screen conversation. Not that they have a lot of time to catch up with the coming of the undead. Also, it was cute when he teased her if she was jealous of his Valerian steel sword. However, I think John's saying that he is Sansa's family and Arya saying, remember that, dude? You know, you're our family too. It, it goes both ways. I think that's really playing into the reveal of John's true biological parents. And I'm really hoping, praying, crossing my fingers, this plays into what John said to Theon last season. And I really, really, really hope when they learn of John's biological parents that Sansa and Arya don't completely turn on him. That would just be so stupid. He, he still half Stark. You guys are half Stark. You're also half Tully. Come on. You guys are all halves, just fucking get over it. However, again, going back to the whole weird thing with Sansa, are you saying Sansa is the smartest person she's ever met? Kind of barf. Sometimes I think they give characters stupid story progression or regression just to fit the storyline. Boo. And again, this isn't an anti-Sansa thing because people freak out when you say anything negative about her. I'm just saying her growth this rapidly is just not believable and it's done at the sacrifice of other characters, and I just don't think that's okay or smart. I think it's lazy and rushed. But overall, John and Arya reuniting, I loved it so much. Speaking of Arya though, I loved all her reunions. She and the Hound had the exact conversation I expected. The Hound doesn't respect excuses or ego. Arya was just savage with him, which he respects. You left me for dead. Well, first I robbed you. That is all those two needed to say to each other and boom, 
the respect is there. The hound's gonna go away being so proud of his little Arya, and Arya's gonna be like, okay, the hound's not a threat. He's on our side. I don't have to deal with this anymore. It just, it was the perfect reunion. Now, Arya and Gendry, whew, I thought Arya was going to be more asexual this season, but she was definitely flirting with Gendry. Partly to get what she wants, the dragon glass spear, which we saw her fighting with in the trailer, but she's also definitely flirting just a flirt. Arya is acting more human this season already, and it's so good to see. Also, her and Gendry hooking up, eh? Eh? I don't think we'll ever see them have sex this season, but I could stand to see them flirting a little bit more. Okay, let's move on to Cersei because holy hell, I feel like this season they are going to drain any sympathy we have for her. Between her being happy the undead breached the wall to her trying to pass off her pregnancy as Euron's, she's fucking evil. One, like I said, the fact she doesn't see the threat of the undead shows how dumb she is. Yeah, let the monsters fight each other, but come on. Even she has to see the threat. The fact she's happy about it just shows how absolutely stupid she is. Two, you know she's going to pass off Jamie and Hur's child as Euron. That is Cersei 101. She loves cucking her husband. That little teary-eyed smile said everything. I hate that I have to have sex with another man against my will, but I love that I can manipulate another man. And then three, the fact that she wants Bronn to kill Jamie and Tyrion is just fucked. We were told Jamie and Cersei have one of the true love stories of Game of Thrones and that Jamie left her not because he was actually leaving her, but because he knows if the undead win, they can never be together and their child will never be safe. Cersei, being the batshit crazy mad queen she is, decides, nah, fuck this. Kill them both. I mean, at first, when Kyburn approached Bronn with the crossbow, I thought, oh, she wants Tyrion dead by the means he killed their father. Okay, that's poetic. But then Kyburn saying both brothers, wow, they are really trying to make us hate her. Now with Bronn, I don't think he'll kill either of them. He has the gold already. Kyburn said it. Cersei pays up front. A wagon full of gold. Bronn has the gold, goes up north, helps fight back the others. And I think that's about it. I don't think Bronn turns on them, but they want us to think that he does. But back to Cersei, I said in other videos, her and Euron's sex would either be the craziest or most boring. According to Cersei, it's more crazy. She reminds me of a lady that loves kinky men, so here you go. It's right up her alley. Now here's the question. Does Euron figure it out or is he around long enough to know that Cersei is already pregnant and not with his child? I don't know. If he doesn't know or suspect, I'd be surprised. If he does know and pretends like he doesn't, I could see for him arranging for the child to die. He's that crazy. The problem is they're both crazy. You're putting crazy and crazy together. Fire and fire doesn't mix well. I, I mean, unless your goal is to create a, a bigger fire, then I guess it does mix. But on the Greyjoys, I don't know why, but I didn't think Theon would rescue his sister so quickly. Wow. So how did this go about? Did he catch up with Euron's ships at Essos and slip into the fleet? Then wait for Euron and the Golden Company to go into King's Landing to rescue Yara? Did they sail from Dragonstone to King's Landing and kind of wait? I don't know. I, I would have loved to see the logistics, but we're not going to, so... Okay. I did thoroughly enjoy that Yara had butted him for abandoning her, but then they were square. True hard ass Ironborn. Also, does anyone else see the parallels between Jon and Yara? Both allow Theon to accept both sides, the Greyjoy and the Stark side. Jon tells him, what are you waiting for in regards to rescuing Yara? And then Yara, despite knowing Theon will follow what she says, allows Theon to go north to help the Starks. Yara and Jon are actually two of my favorite leaders in this show as of right now. They make tough decisions and they're hardened, but they both want what is best for their people and their loved ones. I definitely respect both for leadership. And Yara does have a good point. The Iron Islands could be a safe haven if things go south with the others. And yes, that was a double meaning. Pretend like it was clever. I don't have a lot of positive reinforcement in my life. 
I mentioned this in my live chat post, the episode, by the way, I do a live chat post every episode this final season, so join me for gushing about every episode. But I talked about how Varys' line is the first in a while for the show that really gave me pause. Him talking about the young respecting their elders to keep them at a distance so they don't have to see the truth. Everything comes to an end. That was crushing and definitely foreshadowing of John and Danny splitting up this final season. Which is also a definite foreshadowing with Danny saying they could stay in that spot for a thousand years. Egret said something similar too, and we see how that ended up. Okay, let's talk about that great but sort of weird moment. John rode a dragon. I mean, technically he rode two dragons this episode, but... You know what I mean. While I felt emotional about it and was thrilled for him, it also felt so rushed. Was this a way for Danny to try to hold him closer? But does Danny know the thing about dragon seeds? Would this not be a hint to her that those with Targaryen blood can only ride dragons? Or Valerian dragon rider family blood? I just feel like that would be a huge red flag, but in her head, maybe because she's so in love, she just thinks, Oh, this is proof we're meant to be. Overall, I think this is going to bite Danny in the ass. When John has issues being with her post-revealing his heritage, I have a feeling Regal is going to stay with John. Danny and Drogon can no longer get the other dragon to do what they want. Danny loses one of her children and the claim to the throne to John. This is going to be brutal. Which, did no one else get the feeling that they're trying to make Danny look bad this season? I just have this feeling they're trying to make us look at Danny and Cersei in a worse light. Danny is smug. When people don't respect her, she is happy to see them fear her. She tells Jon, they will respect me or else. She kills those that don't agree with her. She takes the easy route out. And I really think this came to a head when Danny went to thank Sam for saving Jorah and reward him, and it all blew up in her face. And can we all agree that John Bradley's acting was amazing? I've been where Sam has been. Not with a, a woman burning my father and brother with a, a dragon, but a, a similar emotional situation. And... Yeah, it is really hard to hold yourself together and try to get out of that room. The lip quiver, the eyes, everything, he nailed it. How John Bradley played that, upset that his dad died and a little sad, but then just losing it when he learned his brother died was so insanely good. I have a whole new respect for John's acting and want to see him in future things. I even love Jorah's expression when he realizes what Danny did. Jorah, who loves her and would follow her to hell, no, she fucked up. Then Sam leaving the room and the disorientation he felt. That really does happen to you after you learn someone you were really close to died. The rest of the world goes on and you don't feel like you fit in as it blares by. I actually thought Sam was so pissed he was gonna go right to John and tell him the truth and was surprised it was Bran who had to tell him, hey, now's the time. Though Bran really needs to stop saying John isn't his brother. Genetically, no, but in every other way, Yes. I know it's because of how he's become, but seriously, fuck you. Like Sam said, Ned is still Jon's dad. But as they showed this episode with Northerners, blood is thicker than water. But let's talk about Sam telling Jon the truth. That was so well done and so intense. Jon loves Sam and trusts him with his life. They are best friends. When Sam tells Jon the truth, he doesn't tell Sam he's lying like you would expect in any other script. No, John searches his face, his eyes, and trusts Sam is telling the truth. He then questions why Ned betrayed him, which Sam rightly explains. John, he did it to save you. You'd be dead if Robert knew the truth. He didn't lie to you to hurt you or for selfish reasons. He lied to keep a promise to his sister and to keep you alive. If that isn't love, I don't know what is. Now, what does John do with this information? John is far too honest, and I think he's going to tell people this information. Which, how will the North react? Will they be happy that their King of the North, or old King of the North, is the legit heir to the Iron Throne, so fuck you, Dragon Queen? Or will they reject him because he's part Targaryen and related to the Mad King? We'll have to see. Lastly, let's talk about House Umber's home, the Last Hearth. When Tormon and Beric approached, I wasn't sure if Ned Umber had gotten there yet. The showrunners and directors talked about a more linear timeline this season and less time jumps, so I thought, okay, we just saw Ned asking for more wagons and such. 
so he probably isn't there yet. So he's going to arrive to a bloodbath. Nope. Ned got there and he was definitely dead. Or undead. At least we now know this shot from the trailer was a northern castle. Also, I got my wish that northern castles were hit by the others marching south, so... I guess be careful what I wish for because... I'm really sad about Ned's death. Now, since we learned House Glover, those <sighs> dumb assholes, are staying in their home, do we see or hear that they got hit too? Did the others split their armies and then hit them? No way the Glovers don't get decimated for betraying John and the Starks again. <laughs> Anyways, I love that the Night King left the Ned boy as a message. He used the same spiral pattern, but with severed arms. Dark. And the Umber boy in the middle. Look when it gets lit on fire, it actually looks like their pattern and Ned looks like an on-fire weirwood tree. That was definitely on purpose. The Night King is letting them know they're all fucked. Death is here, bitches. Okay, I guess lastly, lastly, I love Jamie's shocked expression and Bran looking so unconcerned. I cannot wait to see their interaction next episode. Jamie is gonna be so flustered and Bran just won't give a fuck. Okay, wow, I have a million other things to say about this first episode, but I'm going to end it here. So make sure you like, subscribe. I'm going to be doing Q and A's, prediction videos, and on Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time, I'm going to do a live chat. So make sure you come back for that. I'm so excited about this final season.